Hi, in this video, I'm going to talk about three core foundational natural language processing tasks that are used as pre-processing pipelines in your typical NLP process. Now, these uh, three techniques can be used both for your classification task as well as in unsupervised techniques like topic modeling. The three techniques I'm going to talk about is TF, that is term frequency, inverse document frequency or called IDF and count vectorizer. So let's get started. Let's get started with the uh, simple uh, one that is a count vectorizer. Before that, these three techniques are typically used to build future vectors from text documents. These techniques are used in information retrieval and show how frequently a term or word occurs in a document. That's what it does typically. And we will see like what is the difference between three and uh, in the next video, I'm going to take these underlying concepts and build some NLP models, both for topic modeling as well as classification task in future. So let's get started. What I'm doing is first I am importing from the scikit-learn future extraction package. I'm importing uh, TF-IDF vectorizer and count vectorizer. Now TF-IDF vectorizer contains both TF and IDF. Uh, vectorizer within it. You can get individual components as well as you can get a combined component of it. And then I'm also importing NumPy. So these are the two things I'm importing. What I've done is I've taken some three sample sentences. Uh, I will work with the real data set in the next video, but these are the three uh, different uh, uh, just sample documents that I have, which I've sent to center. So uh, the words are, I have a credit card account. Second is my account card, uh, debit card is lost my credit card stopped working. These are the three uh, document I have and each document has the single line of uh, text, right? Let me run this as well. So first, uh, the, let's initialize the count vectorizer. And what I'm doing is, uh, in this count vectorizer, I am uh, initializing it to vectorizer and then calling the fit transform method and I am passing these sentences. And what you get output is nothing but a count vector. So let me run the fit transform and let me run the output of it, right? That is a count vector dot A, nothing but it prints the matrix out of it. So if you see this matrix, count vectorizer is nothing but it just count the occurrence of a term in your document right that's what it does now the order of this particular uh, words that are used in the document you can get it from the vectorizer the vectorizer is nothing but the count vectorizer here dot get future names so if you enter this you will get what what this each and every uh, element in the matrix means you'll get so first is account second is card uh, third is credit and fourth is debit so what basically count vector is doing is it converting a collection of text document to a matrix matrix of token counts and what it produces is a sparse representation of the count. If you see, if you have like thousand words across a document, you will have a thousand elements pass matrix, right? That's what you're going to have. Thousand elements path vector uh, and within each row of matrix, that's what you're going to get over here. Now, in this case, if you see the first one, the first word was, I have a credit card account. Now, account is basically the first feature and that is set to one. Similarly, card is also there in the first word. It is set to one. And the other word, take for example, debit. Debit is not there in the first word, uh, first uh, document. Debit is there in the second document. So only the second document is set to one. Right, so they just basically doing a blind count of occurrence of the word in the document. Now, if you see in the second document, the card is occurring twice. There is an my account card, comma debit card, right? So it's occurring twice, and that's why if you see here, the card is basically uh, given a value of two. So basically, it is counting twice, and that's what count vectorizer does. It basically count the occurrence of a uh, particular word in a document. Right now, what you can do, like typically when you're dealing with very big documents, you may end up in thousands of features and some features like might not make sense because it occurs in every documents, right? Or some features might not make sense because it is a rare word and occurring only in few documents or you want to limit to top 10 features uh, that is occurring across all the documents. So there are multiple combinations of it. So what you can do is you can actually give some parameters to count vectorizer. In this case, I'm giving max features four. So I'm going to just pick the top four features. Now you can also 
pass the token by uh, pass a tokenized document by yourself or count vectorizer as an inbuilt tokenizer that it may do take care of it you may want to remove the stop words before passing that also you can do or you can tune some parameters in count vectorizer to help you but typically you want to run the stop words before passing the document now if you go to count vectorizer uh, here there are these these are like some of the features that are available i'm telling max features four so if i have 10 features it will just report it will just like uh, uh, report back only top four features apart from that there are two other features still which you typically use is you have the minimum df and max df you can see it here minimum df and max df now max document frequency is you can tell like only give me word that occurs at maximum 50 percent of the document or you can say if the maximum it occurs in 10 documents then give me that so you can limit it so you don't want the common words which are there in all the document to report back so you can adjust the setting a little and minimum document frequency is you are telling like if this particular word occurs only in uh, minimum it can be like in percentage or it can be the number of documents right you can say 0.5 which is 50 percent or you can say 5 which is number of documents uh, only return back only if it is in the minimum number of documents now in this case the rare words that occurs only in one of the two documents can be filtered out right and you can also give n gram which where you can tell okay uh, take by grams and tie grams and everything right but here what i'm doing is i'm stay setting on the max features four let me run it let me run the again uh, same two command that count vector a and feature names and now you can see basically i'm getting only the four feature vector i'm not getting the other vector i'm getting only the top four and account card credit my these are the four vectors and wherever this particular uh, word is present in the document it will set to one now if you see my is actually maybe a stop word so that's why i said you better run it as run a stop word uh, before coming into account vectorizer that way you can uh, remove some noise right so this is basically um, that count vectorizer and what you can also do is now what i'm doing is i'm setting the stop words now you can either pass an external stop word or you can use the internal stop word here so i'm telling like my max features is four and the stop word is basically uh, english uh, dictionary right and let me uh, run this again and now if you see the output i'm still having the four features but i'm getting the my is removed from it i'm getting only four uh, critical features that may be important for my document not all the stop words so that is all that is also a parameter you can set right the next one what you can do is you can i told about ngram so you can sell uh, ngram where you can tell okay sometimes a credit card debit card right this card account this may not be a single word this may be a combination of word that can be an credit card that can be a credit application so there are multiple aspects that come into play along with credit so you may want to pick uh, right and buy gram in that type so you can set ngrams range i am setting here like a one and two is the maximum that is buy gram and then now if you you run in case if it comes with a maximum six features in this case i am giving maximum six features six features so you can see that okay there is one uh, a bigram that has come credit card and it is counting the occurrence of it right so basically count vector is nothing but does a simple count or nothing more than that now uh, that's about a count vectorizer let's move to term uh, frequency now term frequency basically what it does it does the number of time a term occurs in a document that's what typically it does so if this is the formula right you have number of occurrences of term t in a document by number of words in a document there's a simple formula but there are different uh, uh, um, uh, norm that you can use uh, to basically kind of rationalize the uh, term frequency count i will talk about it so this is a simple formula that you need to remember and then what i'm doing is from the vectorizer this time instead of the count vectorizer i am calling the tf idf vectorizer and i am telling like use idf false when i say use idf false it is going to only use the term frequency the inverse document frequency is going to be set to uh, basically false over here right and i'm telling the norm as l1 by default the norm is l2 so the norm l1 is nothing let me run this and let me show you the output so what i'm doing is i'm passing the same sentence on the top and then i am printing the tf uh, vector a and in this case the vectorizer dot feature names so if you see this is how the output looks like if if you see the difference here is it is not a original count of occurrence in the word document it is just nothing but a normal output that's why we are using the l1 norm and if you see the formula it is number of occurrence of term in document by number of words in document so basically if you see over here uh, the number of occurrence of term in this case is one and here one two three 
four four documents as this particular word account card credit debit have so it's one by four that is point two five but if you see the next document you have one two three four five six right so it's one by six in this case that's why it's point one four and in this case like card is present in two documents we saw that's why it's two by six right and the element norm is simple like count the number of words in the document uh, that are there that you are vectorizer uh, you have picked it from and uh, you take the original occurrence in the document and divide by it that's what you are doing over in the l1 norm right so that that's why you get this matrix uh, now these are these were the sentences i just again pasted it as it as an uh, text so that we can see it now you can also run an l2 norm now l2 norm the formula is same here you have the number of occurrence of term in a document uh, now l2 norm you know it's a euclidean norm so what we do in euclidean is you take a square root of each uh, each uh, occurrence like in this case 1 plus 1 1 square plus 1 square plus 1 square plus 1 square in this case it will be 1 square plus 2 square because it occurs in two document it is your typical euclidean norm so that that's what l2 norm is so it depends on how you want to normalize your output that's what you're telling so here i'm telling norm is l2 i am going to print this and then what i am going to do is i am also going to print the uh, output over here right now uh, i am going to run this formula over here manually so what i am doing over here is if you see in this case i have 1 2 3 4 4 words are occurring in this document out of our uh, feature vector right and if you take this first word 1 1 square plus 1 square plus 1 square plus 1 square it is 4 that's why i put np dot square root of 4 and the first word is 1 right so basically one for the, the the first word account is occurring uh, over here out of ones out of the total four other uh, vectors that are occurring in the document so if you do one by square root of n you get 0.5 and that's why it's 0.5 now let's take this example right the card that is occurring two times in the second document if you remember the word that we had basically my card debit card account my card debit card account so this is occurring twice in that particular document right so what i am doing is in this case i am i will set my numerator to 2 because it's number of times the word is occurring in the document divide by square root of you have six terms occurring in the document in total out of our feature vector 1 2 3 4 5 6 so i am telling 1 square plus 2 square because card is occurring twice right 2 square plus 1 square uh, plus 1 square so 2 square is 4 5 6 7 8 9 so a np dot square root of 9 so if i do this i will get like uh, 0 0.6666 and this is the output you get 0 0.6666 so it is nothing but a simple uh, uh simple like uh, wow, what is the term you are looking at and divide by the occurrence of all the term in that particular document out of your feature vector that's what it does now what you can also do in the tf idea factorizer is you can set the norm equal to none right when you set the norm equal to none so basically let's see what happens right in this case i am taking this and I am not using L1 norm or L2 norm. I am just using idea false and norm equal to none. The, when I set the norm equal to none, it becomes nothing but your count vectorizer. So instead of using count vectorizer, you can also use TF idea vectorizer with use idea false and norm equal to none. That is basically your term frequency vectorizer. The next we are going to quickly look at inverse document frequency. Now, inverse document frequency, what it does is it diminishes the weight of term that occur very frequently in the document set and increases the weight of term so that occurs rarely. That's what it does. And the formula is over here. IDF is nothing but log of number of documents. In this case, we have three documents, right? I have a credit card account, my credit card, we have three documents. It's log of number of documents divided by number of documents with term T in it. So it is, it is like you can see like what was the term frequency, right? It is nothing but the inverse of it with the logarithmic applied to it. So let's uh, do the TF IDF. In this case, what I'm doing is I'm again taking the TF IDF factorizer, but I'm not using the use IDF equal to false. So, so what is going to happen is it will by default use both TF and IDF in this case, and I'm passing the sentence and transforming it. There are two parameters I mentioned, minimum document frequency and maximum document frequency that is available for even TF as well as IDF. So you can see this parameter minimum document frequency and maximum document frequency you can use for this as well. So let me run this. 
Now, since it's give me, going to give me a, a final product of TF IDF, I want to pick only the IDF vector. So what I'm doing is I'm using this vectorizer IDF and I'm calling it IDF underscore. So it will just give me the IDF vector. It will not give me the entire TF IDF vector. Now TF IDF is nothing but your TF term frequency that you calculated in the previous step multiplied by this inverse document frequency. That's why it's called TF IDF term frequency multiplied by inverse document frequency, right? So in this case, what I'm doing is I'm picking the IDF and I'm picking the feature names. Now, if you see the output over here, this is what you are getting. You are getting a uh, single complete array of all the documents like account and everything. Now, let's, let's take this example and see uh, how it works, right? Now, in this case, what I'm, I have the formula below, uh, np.log, the number of documents is three. If you remember, that's the numerator of the formula for IDF, divided by occurrence of the term, term, right? So account is coming in one document, two document, right? So what I'm doing is np log of three by two. And then I'm adding one. So what? So if you see in the top formula, I didn't mention one. So why is this one? The, what we are doing, the effect of adding one to the IDF in the equation above is that terms with zero IDF. Think about this particular uh, card, one, two, three, it's occurring in all the documents. So when I say three by three, it becomes like literally like one and uh, logarithmic of one is zero. So basically what this one does it, it, they, it, it kind of cancel off the effect of the term occurring in all the document. That's why we had one to it. And the scikit-learn implementation by default add ones to one to it when I use smoothing idea of equal to false, right? So that's what I'm doing over here. So let me run this first for the account. That is three by two plus one. And you can see the output is 1.4054 for and the account over here is 1.4054. And this is like simple underlying mathematical uh, equation that is used within IDF. And it, if you want to get the entire TF IDF vector, you just uh, print like TF IDF dot A over here. Right. So this is nothing but your term frequency multiplied by inverse document frequency that you saw, saw that you saw on the top. That's it. So that's what like the basics foundation of your vectorizers that are used in your NLP pipeline. Typically, your count vectorizer, your term frequency, inverse document frequency. Now this will be used in your in your the future video that I'm going to do for topic modeling as well as for classification. And I will talk more in detail as we get there. Thank you very much.